Booby Doo. It's everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And you may be asking why do I have a piece of paper stuck in between the focusing ring and the lens barrel? Because this lens was dropped. Ah, look at that. Right here, it, it hit something. And now it's sort of egg shaped. And I can take this piece of paper, move it all the way around like this until I get to the same spot. You can see where's my uh, pointing instrument. It's got a nick right there. So what am I going to do? It's rubbing against the lens barrel and it's making it hard to focus. Well, I'm going to attempt for your edification of tapping it right here with this can with this to see if I could just unegg shape it. One mustn't be too uh, extravagant with their the wrappings and snappings. That helped. I think it needs another wrap. So see I got a piece of wood and I'm resting it on the opposite side of the focusing ring. I'm going to hit it right here again. Another love tap. Oh, it's getting better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hit it on this side for some reason. Another love tap. It's better, but I want to see if I could get it even more better. It's a definite improvement. Definitely an improvement. So what I'm going to do is I go to the other side. Tap it right here. Hmm. Let's use our paper trick. See if the paper tells us anything. Instead of scraping along this whole spot here, you see there's this mark here, it's only scraping in one spot now. It's definitely an improvement, but I don't know if I want to go any further with it. I'm going to give it one last tap right here. I'm going to live with that because it's way better than it was and I don't want to go overboard if I keep hitting it I may make something worse now some people say you should take your lenses apart and if they're dirty you could clean them well uh, the reason I tap this lens is to make it more usable is because it's so clean on the inside absolutely clean now but what is the problem the problem is this This ring here that has the uh, uh, some information on it is probably screwed in to the filter ring. And in order to get that off, I would have to get some sort of rubber stopper about this size, but small enough to fit inside uh, the filter ring. And then I have to press on it really hard and see if I can snap it off. It might be glued on, so I might have to soak it in acetone, and that's going to make a mess. 
this flat black ring. Uh, well, uh, that's not very uh, solvent resistant and acetone will probably uh, screw it all up, get all over your lens and everything else. But let's say I got that off, right? I got that off, right? So I got that off. Underneath it, this flat black ring, here's this right there. There's a little notch there. And there's a little notch here. So we have to get a spanner wrench that had tool bits that are uh, thin enough to fit into that little notch. And see how shallow it is? And then this may be glued in, and you have to soak it in acetone and loosen it up. And then you get your spanner wrench, has like the two tool bits going to the two notches there. And then you have to focus your chi and snap that ring off without hoping that you, you uh, 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 accidentally don't pop out of those notches and put a nice scratch in your flat back ring, which you can always touch up with a magic marker, but it never looks right. And it would be even worse if uh, you didn't focus your chi right, and then you see you pop that in those two little notches, and you could scrape the main element, and then all your good work is ruined. So I used to do this for a living, and I'm just telling you what the pratfalls are. And across companies, they don't keep the same design or the same manufacturing techniques for whatever reason. They're all designed a little bit different. So it looks to me like this front element, and it could be a single element or it could be a cemented doublet, would come out after you remove this ring. And you could see in here that the next elements also have a retaining ring with a little notch right there and right there. And then these are usually never uh, cemented. So once you get this front element out, the second one is usually easier to get out. And then you lift the element out. Now that might be in, a, in its own little uh, lens assembly barrel and it might just pop out. And then you have access, you can see the, uh, the aperture ring. All right, so if you get that assembly out, then you open your aperture ring all the way and you can clean out that element that's on the other side of the aperture ring, right? I mean, if you had excessive dust or fungus, then you'd have to put everything back. Now, there could be a spacer ring between the, uh, uh, the, the, the second back element group and you have to make sure you put that back and it may be really thin. You don't want to get a kink in it. And then you have to make sure you place everything in nice and neat because they have this uh, uh, spacing. They, they might fine tune it for each lens a little bit. So you got to make sure you place everything back the same way. In fact, you wait, may, after you take this uh, retaining ring out, you, before you lift the barrel out, you may want to take a, a mark with a razor blade or an X-Acto knife and just put a little notch uh, on that barrel and, and this outer barrel so you can line them in the same spot. And then you got to tighten it up. And then you have to remember, well, when I snapped it out, was it snug? Was it slightly snug? Was it just a little bit? Because you don't want to put too much pressure on elements because then they'll distort. And the same thing with this one. You clean it all up, get it nice and neat, put it back in there. And then uh, you got to uh, screw this one in too uh, to whatever the same torque the other one is, but you're just guessing. And then this one, this one you just screw in snug tight and you don't have to glue anything in for next time although chances are you'll never take it apart again in a thousand years so this lens is really really excellent condition except for that one bang here where it got dropped it's an excellent mechanical condition and it's excellent optical condition now i went from a lens that was uh, sort of nasty to use to one that's uh, pretty easy to turn around and i'm not going to do anymore i'll just have to live with that i can live with that that's really made an improvement. And that's about as much, uh, as, oh, and that's another thing. You could disassemble this all. There's, if you take this rubber ring off, there's probably some screws underneath that. And uh, you may be able to get that off. And you may have to take these screws off and pull this out. And there may be other retaining rings there. And finally, you could completely screw this out, right? Because uh, there's probably, underneath this ring, there's probably a stop keeping it from going all the way. So you would have to take this ring out. This may just be a slip ring, right? And then there's a little stop that's stopping this from turning all the way. Then once you get that out, you just turn it all the way and this pops out. And it may be a double or triple helicoil. And of course you could put some special grease on it to, to lube it up better. And then you have to make sure you align it the same way. And then um, you have to make marks like where's infinity, right? So when you put it back in your camera, it focuses to infinity. 
usually uh, three scales are very accurate. So if you were to say, um, let's see, uh, set it at uh, six feet, mark off six feet with your, uh, uh, you know, your ruler. Uh, you see, this camera doesn't have a focal line thing, a focal line, a focal plane mark on it. So, but you could guess the focal plane's here someplace, and then you kind of mark it from there six feet. And then, if you look at the ground glass and you had a magnifier, you can just uh, fine tune it to six feet, lock everything up, put the rubber band on, and there you go. And uh, it sounds more complicated than it is, but you still have to, you know, do it. And uh, I would recommend, as a person who did it for a living, not to take your lenses apart if you don't have to. Um, always try and buy a vintage lens that looks clean and nice to begin with. I bought this lens many years ago, maybe 30 or 40 years ago, and it was made somewhat before that, so it could be 50 or even 60 years old, I don't know. Uh, and look at it, it's really clean. So I'm going to, I guess, clean that off a little bit later, but I'm just saying, do you... Uh, do you really want to go that far? You do not want to go that far. You just want to uh, do the least you can do and enjoy your photography. Now, this particular star of a lens, the 50 millimeters, uh, they are really a dime a dozen. And in perfect uh, perfect condition, probably get one for 50 bucks. I mean, perfect brand new looking, 50 bucks. Of the Pentax type, <clears throat> other brands may cost more, like Nikon has some sort of premium on them. And Canon, Canon they went all plastic. But to get a really nice one, you may pay a premium for that too. But uh, now I have a lens that uh, I hated to use, and now it looks like I could use it. Instead of so having a whole scrapey spot, it only has one spot, and it's not as uh, hard to move. So, what can I say? <laughs>